Today, I'm going to show you a complete walkthrough of exactly how to create AI photos of anyone using LoRa models and stable diffusion. I'll give you tons of examples and my favorite settings as I go over every step and I explain exactly how these models work so that you can get the exact images that you want. Now, before I start this, I do need to mention that this is a very gray legal area. Look, right of publicity laws, which protect an individual's image and likeness from commercial exploitation are being used in multiple lawsuits. These laws vary from state to state and depending on exactly how you're using the images, other laws come into play. Anyway, I just wanna be clear, I am not a lawyer, none of this is legal advice. Please be smart, be careful, and above all, be kind when using this technology. With that out of the way, let's get started. Now, LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation, and it's basically a technique for fine-tuning stable diffusion models to generate images based on a specific style, character, or object. So if you want images that look like Elon Musk, Dragon Ball Z, or even the medieval catapult. LoRa models can get you exactly that. Now you can train your own model on just about anything that you can think of. And if enough people are interested, I'll do a step-by-step -step video on that. So leave me a comment if this is something that you wanna see. But for today, we're gonna access the multitude of models that are already out there ready to download. Now to really get why LoRa models are so special and why they're growing so fast, you need to understand how they actually work. Look, when you're using Allura, the tuning doesn't happen on the full model. Instead, it only happens on what's called the cross attention layer. Now, if you imagine that you have a group of friends and you all wanna make a decision together, you've been elected the leader. You wanna to listen to everybody's input before making a final choice. And so you focus your attention on the best ideas and the ideas that are repeated the most often. That's what the cross attention layer does. It prioritizes all that information traveling through and gives it the most important, most repeated items. So your LoRa model doesn't actually change the training data that's coming into a checkpoint, but rather how that model prioritizes the data. Now this massively reduces the number of parameters that are needed, which leads to much smaller files and much less GPU needed. A typical checkpoint model is between three and six gigs, whereas a LoRa model can usually come in around 100 meg. But this also means that you can't use a LoRa model alone. It needs a checkpoint, like the base version, 1.5, or Realistic Vision, any LoRa, and any of the other countless models out there. In just a sec, I'm gonna demo all of these so that you can see how they impact the images that are coming out of a LoRa. By the way, you can also get any of these from Civit AI. Just filter it for checkpoints and then search for the name of the checkpoint you want. Now, personally, I like to use Run Diffusion for my stable diffusion. If you don't know it, it's a way of operating stable diffusion in the cloud. So you don't need to worry about what GPU you have. You can actually access anywhere from a smaller GPU to a much faster one just by changing the amount you pay per minute. If you're interested, I'll link to a video that explains exactly how to do Run Diffusion, and I'll link to my code, which is davidtatera15, that gets you 15% off. So one place that you can download these models is from Hugging Face. I'll leave this link down in the description. And you can see there's just tons and tons of LoRa models, 24 pages worth. And some of them are just gonna give you a tiny bit of information. Some of them will actually give you some of the best practices for it, guidance scale, as well as some example pictures. What I prefer actually though is to use Civit AI. Now Civit AI is a much more visual representation, but as you can see, it's got a lot of checkpoint models in as well. It's all different models organized together. So if you wanna see just the LoRa's, you're gonna to wanna to go up here and click on LoRa, and that is gonna filter to only the LoRa models. As you can see, there's all kinds of different categories from specific characters. You want someone from a, an anime show or a specific cartoon. There's a character from Frozen. Then you have different styles. If you want, you know, He-Man Master of the Universe or a mech style. Celebrities are of course a very popular one. If you need Jackie Chan, Elizabeth Olsen, and then things like vehicles, if you need the Ghostbuster vehicle, if you wanna get a Batman car. But the best part comes when you dig into the next level. So when you click on an image here on Civit AI, you're gonna automatically get a whole variety of important pieces of information. But also, 
If you click this little eye next to any of the pictures, it's gonna give you the details of how that exact picture was made. So everything from the prompt, the negative prompt, samplers, models, and there's a super easy way to put these right into Stable Diffusion that I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so we're gonna start by picking out a Lure model here, and I'm gonna go over and do a celebrity one. And I've already tried it out and found this is to be a good model. So I'm gonna find our friend, Miss Taylor Swift. As you can see, you get a few different sample pictures of what's been done with it. Um, sometimes you'll get these 13 plus or 17, 18 plus, depending on just how graphic the image. You can go ahead and download the model by clicking here. And then there are also a variety of details that are important here. You can see it's a Laura model, how many downloads, when it was made, how recently this was uploaded. Obviously this one's only, you know, maybe a couple weeks old at this point. Um, the trigger word, which is really important because that you need to make sure is in the prompt so that it knows to trigger this particular Laura model. There's also another piece that we're gonna put in there that triggers this model as well. Then I always go check down here and make sure that I look at the entire text here. Sometimes there's some information about what strengths I should use on certain pieces of the prompt. So once it's downloaded, I need to go ahead and put it into my Stable Diffusion interface. So go over here to Automatic 1111 folder, find the Laura folder. And that's gonna hold any of my Lura models. They're all gonna end in this .safe tensors extension. So here I've got my brand new one, my, my um, Lura Taylor version one safe tensors. And I can go ahead and copy that in and it'll start uploading it. And once it's loaded, all I have to do is click on this little button right here, which says show hide extra networks. And that's gonna bring up all my information about Lura's here. And all I have to do is click on refresh and it's gonna show me all the Lure networks that I have installed. By the way, if you're not using Run Diffusion and you have it on your computer or you're using it on Google Drives, there's going to be a Lura folder for you somewhere. Just do a quick search, find the Lura folder. That's where you need to put your .safe tensors extension files. When I click on the little Lura preview, or no preview for most cases, it goes ahead and puts this embedding code into the prompt. It references the Lura model that we're specifically using, and it also gives a weight at the end. Now you can see this starts off with a one, you can go all the way up to a two or down to a zero, two would give you a double weight on this part of the prompt, zero is gonna give you no weight at all, and then in between is gonna give you a different variety. So this one does have a trigger word, so we're gonna copy that trigger word and use that. And now we have a prompt. So let's go ahead and generate our first image using this Laura model. As you can see, we got something. I mean, it definitely has a resemblance to Taylor Swift, although I don't think it's even close to as good as these pictures. And that's to be expected, because at this point, all we've done is match up the Laura model. We haven't matched up any of the other settings. Now, when we click on this little eye here and it brings up all this information, all we have to do is click Copy Generation Data. We head on over here to Stable Diffusion, paste that data in, click on this icon that says Regeneration Parameters, and automatically it takes all the different parameters from here, such as the positive and negative prompt, the sampling method, height, width, sampling steps, everything, even the seed number automatically placed in there. And now we can go generate and we should get an image that's much, much closer to what they showed us. And it looks like we got a little bit of an error here actually. And this happens pretty often. You'll see this could not find upscaler error. All you gotta do is turn off the high res fix. It'll make sure that it's a little smaller, a little low res image, but you're still gonna get the same rest of the prompt. I think we did get a much closer image to Taylor Swift there. Still not as good as the ones that they're showing me here. And a big part of that has to do with this up here. Now, right now we're running it in Stable Diffusion 1.5 as the checkpoint. But like I said, every Lura model has to be paired with a checkpoint. Now, one of my favorites is called Realistic Vision. And now it's gonna run this exact same prompt over again, but it's gonna run it through Realistic Vision's checkpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to a batch of four just to get us a few more options to look at. And as you can see, much more realistic images. That one looks pretty dang right on. Even the eyes look great in these ones. Pretty minor tweaks, but anyways, impressive. And then we have the Any Laura model. Now this one actually gives everything kind of a cartoon anime feel, uh, which isn't really what I'm going for here, but I just wanna show you it so you can see how much this checkpoint has an effect on the outcome from the prompt. All right, and I'm gonna generate the same exact output under the Any Laura checkpoint. <laughs> okay, and I'm a little bit surprised by the output. Um, usually it cartoons it up, but it doesn't take things quite this far. Um, you can see not a single word of that prompt has been changed. It's exactly the same word for word as it was for those earlier ones. But there you go. Gives you some sort of an idea of what difference the, the checkpoint does when you're tying it in with the Laura. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's get this back over to realistic vision since that one seems to produce the best result. But we're gonna have a little fun with the prompt. Let's add, let's change it and add a stunning photo of SKS woman smirking standing outdoors at the 
Ohio State Fair enjoying a foot long hot dog. No, let's change it to holding. I don't want to end up with her accidentally eating it. That'd be kind of weird. But I'm gonna leave the rest of the prompt just how it was. Oh my gosh. Let's see what we got. Wow, <laughs> interesting. That one looks pretty close. I kind of like that one. All right, let's have some more fun. Let's make some pictures of the former president of the United States. So I can go ahead and download this Laura model as well. Go back to that same automatic 1111 folder, Laura folder, and I will drag it on in. As of the last, I don't want to just take the random off the shelf version. I want to copy the generation data. I want to get the best looking image I can based on what I've been told. So copy it in, click on that regeneration parameters button, and it's going to go ahead and put all that information in here. So let's generate it. Nah, not really. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like him. That looks like him sort of with his head stretched a little weird. And that one's got nobody in it at all. Okay, but we're getting in the general idea. I'm gonna go ahead and swap around some elements of this prompt to get something a little more fun. One other thing that I've also noticed with playing with these models is if you have someone who's a celebrity like Taylor Swift or Donald Trump and you're not getting very good images, go ahead and put their name in as part of the prompt. So I'm gonna change this beginning to Donald Trump sitting at a table in a McDonald's. And then the Laura prompt, which is getting a one on it right now. I'm gonna dump that down to a point eight and just see how it does. But I'll leave the rest of this prompt exactly as it is and we'll generate. And we're looking pretty good. I'm amazed it almost got the word Trump on there, which is impressive. Um, all somewhat decent pictures, but it's not really coming out how I like it. So I'm gonna change up this. I also think that the one male as well as the Donald Trump sitting is why I ended up getting two people in a lot of those pictures. And then lastly, it says that this one was built as a base model of Stable Diffusion 1.5. So I'm gonna switch it over to 1.5. That one's pretty good. Uh, not so much. Could use a little tweaks to the face. That one's really good. That one looks almost spot on. Hair looks good, face looks good. Yeah, that, that would be my number one out of all of these. Not number one, but simply phenomenal. Just like this video. I have great respect for this man, David. And no matter what, you must subscribe to his channel. Right on, thanks man. In addition to using Lauras for characters, you can use them for objects, locations, or even styles. All right, and I'm gonna use this AI, this He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Let's go ahead and copy in all our prompt information. I'm gonna go ahead and generate. And from that prompt, I definitely get a bit of a He-Man look. Um, kind of reminds me of the cartoon. That one's extra weird with the real faces on there. Uh, a little closer there. Still not quite right. It's got kind of the look of it, but it doesn't look anything like the cartoons that we were seeing over here. And that's where the any Laura checkpoint really comes in. And this works really well. I've tested for a bunch of different anime and cartoon, anything where it's, you know, hand-drawn art as opposed to photorealistic type of images. And that looks pretty much dead on. I mean, if you've ever seen the cartoon, that is exactly what it looks like. All right, let's do one last round. This time, we're gonna get a vehicle. And I've been wanting to check out this TIE Fighter. And I'll go ahead and copy all my prompt information. Generate. Three of them aren't so much. I wouldn't say that's very TIE Fighter-like or that, but that one's pretty spot on. And I'm impressed with how well the uh, the animation looks from the Annie Laura. Now, if we want it to look a little bit less like a cartoon, a little more realistic, then we can go over here and go to, <laughs> for some reason, I cannot type the word realistic. Do you ever have that where there's a specific word that for some reason you just can't seem to type it? Anyway, today it seems that realistic is my word. I gotta say, that's a those are some pretty good looking TIE Fighters. Um, I am definitely impressed with what the Realistic Vision did with this. I think that worked out to be by far the best. On top of this, you can use multiple Loras to create a single image. Now there's different methods if you wanna combine the two Loras together or use them to create multiple distinct characters in the same image. Comment down below if this is something you're interested in and I'll create a future video on it. If you caught the audio from our former president in here, that's also a little AI trick that I learned. It is a totally free way to create celebrity voice clips. Hey there, Billy for David's YouTube channel, the number one AI channel that you absolutely must subscribe to this year. Change the singers on a song. One, two, 
Three and tough up folk. Snoop Dobby Dog and Dr. Dre is at the dope. Or even have your favorite cartoon character rapping for you. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on a sweater already. I'm gonna show you a simple step-by-step -step system to do it all, and as soon as that video is live, I'll post it here.